Hello, happy people. It's good to be with you tonight for our daily devotional scripture that encourages you to pray. I want to encourage you to get out your Bibles and um, turn to John chapter 20. We're going to be uh, looking at the peace that Jesus shares with the disciples. And uh, I want to encourage you to do what I'm doing, and that's to share this broadcast onto your social media. Uh, a lot of you guys do that, and that's just really awesome. Um, and I see you doing it in a lot of different ways. Uh, I, one of our church members, I noticed he shares it, shared it onto his uh, personal story on Facebook, and uh, that was cool to see that. So however you want to do it, I want to encourage you to do that. We're going to be looking at just a real blessing that Jesus gives to us, and that's uh, peace in the middle of this uh, crazy world that we live in. And uh, in, in the John chapter 20 reading, we're going to see that he says this three times, uh, peace be with you. And so we're going to look at that. We're going to pray about that tonight. Look forward to sharing that with you. So before we jump into God's word, let's bow our heads for a, a moment of prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you for today. Thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. It's new to us every morning. Father, speak to us tonight through your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Plant your word deep in our hearts and deep in our minds. Water it, uh, Father, by the work of your Holy Spirit, that it would bear the fruit that you desire for it to bear. And Father, we thank you for the gift of the peace that surpasses all human understanding. And use us, Father, to be your vessels, to share your word, which is meant by you to be our, the lamp unto our feet, the light unto our path, uh, to share your word with others, that they would also, especially those who are facing anxieties right now, um, that they would also be blessed with this, this peace that comes from you. Uh, Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name, according to your will and for your glory. And all of God's children, we all say, Amen. Amen. Before we get into John chapter 20, I want to just say again a special thank you to our social media team. I'm so blessed to have you guys in partnership, co-laborers in Christ, and uh, thank you for all that you do, answering questions, pointing people in the right direction on our social media. Um, you guys are just such a, such a blessing. I want to encourage everybody, if you have any prayer requests or praise reports, hit that prayer button, take advantage of our prayer app that's embedded into everything we do socially, and uh, let us know how we can pray for you. If you have any praise reports, we love praising God with you also, so put it all in there, and, uh, and we'll let the Holy Spirit sort it out. So take advantage of that. Um, Really excited. Uh, yesterday, videotaped four episodes with uh, pastor and author Phil Ressler. And uh, he wrote this awesome book, 40 Things to Give Up for Lent. Lent is right around the corner. Ash Wednesday, February 17th. It's going to be here quick. I mean, it's already February 3rd. Can you believe it? And so uh, we've got four episodes taped. And so we're going to watch two episodes this week, Thursday, Friday. Then we're going to watch two episodes next week, Thursday, Friday. And uh, his devotional is really awesome because it focuses on things that really we should try to give up. Not just chocolate or coffee or wine or Facebook, you know, or whatever. But stuff like guilt and anger and unforgiveness and impatience and, and all that sort of stuff. And so uh, the name of the, the title of the book is 40 Things to Give Up for Lent. Uh, Tune us in tomorrow night and you'll get the first episode. Phil's a great guy. I've known him for about, I don't know, 12 years now. He's just a super guy. So uh, really excited about that. Also, we're going to offer a new membership class. I'm going to be doing that on Sunday mornings. And um, if you'd like to participate in that, just reach out uh, and uh, to the church office and we'll get you the Zoom information on how you can do that. You know, you can come in person also. Um, we'll give you all the information on that. And... Um, with that, I, I can't wait to get into what we're going to talk about tonight. So, but before we start, I want to I want to just share a quick little prayer walking story with you. In Missouri, um, when I first started doing prayer walking, um, did it in in my own neighborhood, and uh, we had a Bible study group that met at our house, and then every so often we would go out and go prayer walking. I remember the first time I prayer walked my own neighborhood, um, went across the street actually into a subdivision across the street from us. I remember the very first house uh, that I, I I called on, rang the doorbell. And a uh, lady answered, and um, I was there with two of the men from my uh, home Bible study group. And I uh, introduced us and said, you know, we're praying for the neighborhood. Love to pray for you. How can we pray for you? And then this, this lady then shared with me um, about her husband who has uh, gone on a business trip. And she shared that, you know, they were just going through a very difficult time. And um, could we keep them in prayer? And of course said, yes, we'd be happy to keep them in prayer. And one of the things that I, I took away from that very first prayer walking experience is that there are a lot of people out there 
there are a lot of people out there who have a lot on their heart, a lot on their mind. And, you know, if you'll but reach out and just say, hey, you know, how can I pray for you? Uh, I'd love to pray for you. Um, people, there are a lot of people who will share prayer requests with you. And then, you know, through that, then you can um, minister to them. You can pray for them, obviously. And by God's grace, you may even be able to provide care for them as well. And uh, so I just want to encourage you that the ministry of prayer is such a powerful ministry. Prayer is not a program. Uh, prayer is a, um, a gift that God has given to us. It's a gift for us. It's a gift meant by God for us to bless others in this world with, whether they're believers or unbelievers. So just want to encourage you with that. Tonight, we're going to look at John chapter 20, and we're going to look at uh, the peace here that Jesus shares with the disciples. So if you want to turn your Bibles, John, chap John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, let me read it for us. It says, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. This is the first of three times he's going to say this in this reading. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Uh, now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, uh, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told Thomas, hey, we've seen the Lord. <laughs> but Thomas said, well, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, the disciples were inside again. Thomas was with them this time. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, put out your hand, place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas replied to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Uh, now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. So tonight, what I want to do is just talk with you a little bit about the three times that Jesus says those words, peace be with you, and, and see what we learn for our faith tonight. So the first time Jesus says, peace be with you, uh, you know, he offers and uh, points out his wounds. He says, you know, peace be with you, and he, and he shows them, right? Uh, and then the interesting thing is, is the, the response of the disciples, they're glad. <laughs> you know, you don't see, oh my gosh, Jesus, are you okay? <laughs> no, oh good, <laughs> he's wounded. <laughs> um, not exactly, but I mean, it is kind of interesting, right? Um, but you know, it does make sense. I mean, because aren't you and I glad um, when we consider his wounds? I mean, not that he had to go through that and suffer that, but, but we should be glad that he was wounded for us because that's the way that our sins are paid for. Because he suffered uh, for us the, the punishment that was justly uh, supposed to be ours. And to, to see his wounds, you know, when the disciples see his wounds, well, that means they're seeing a risen and resurrected Christ. And so that is something to be joyful about. That is something to be glad about. Because when, when they see his wounds, they see that then he has been victorious over sin and death and the devil. Amen? And so that is definitely um, a way that God, through his Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, gives us peace by helping us to focus on these wounds of Jesus. Because when we see his wounds, then we have peace because we know that our sin has been atoned for. And then in, the, in this very same visit, Jesus repeats himself. And he says again, peace be with you. And you know, as I was reflecting on that for our devotion tonight, I thought to myself, you know, it's, isn't that just how it is? That oftentimes we need to hear God proclaim peace to us more than once, right? Because something we've done or we should have done, but we didn't do or something that we're unsettled about that we're anxious, you know, that may, may or may not ever happen. Um, sometimes we just need to hear God say, peace be unto you. And, and more than once and in, and in uh, the same setting. As a, as a seminary student, 
I forget which class it was, but as a seminary student, one time it kind of dawned on me, you know, um, gosh, you know, here we do, we do confession and absolution at the beginning of the service, and then we have communion later in the service, and, and in communion we get our sins forgiven, but in confession and absolution we get our sins forgiven, and I mean, how much sinning are we doing in between? <laughs> so why, why do we need to do this twice, you know, and and if you know me, you know I'm kind of transparent. I just, you know, if it's in here, it's coming out of here. And so up went the hand, and I don't know, maybe I didn't even raise my hand, you know. But I, I asked the question of the professor, you know, um, why do we have confession and absolution if we're already going to have communion in the same service? You know, why do we do this? And, uh, you know, really, again, my question was, since we're going to be forgiven, why do we have forgiveness twice? And I, and I have to tell you, I, I, I do think, I do think that though my professors uh, were happy to see me graduate. <laughs> get, go out there, get out there. <laughs> um, you know, what the professor helped me to understand, and I hope, hopefully I can share it with you in a, in a lighthearted, but, you know, in intentional way, is that God is abundant with his grace. God is abundant with his grace. He is not stingy. God tells us over and over and over again. He demonstrates it to us over and over again. He lets us experience it over and over and over again. God is abundant with his grace. Why? Because he wants us to have his peace. Not some sort of man-made, fictitious peace, but his peace. He wants us to be blessed with his peace. And so, and so he wants us to hear over and over and over again that he loves us. And, you know, I have to say, that's really one of the strengths of the, of the liturgy, of the uh, order of service. Because, and I'm not the one to come up with this, uh, uh, and I wish I knew who was the one to come up with this. I'd be happy to give them credit for it. But, you know, the liturgy, the order of service has been called uh, God's grace insurance policy. God's grace insurance policy. What, what does that mean? Well, the, the liturgy contains in it over and over and over again words of God's grace and mercy to us. And, and so why is it God's grace insurance policy for us? Because quite frankly, even if the preacher messes up, and sometimes it happens, you know, even if the preacher messes up and somehow, I don't know, but somehow forgets to mention God's grace, well, the liturgy makes sure that the people in the pew heard what they really needed to hear, which is God's grace and mercy and love to them through the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and experienced and received by the means that he has instituted. Can we give God a thumbs up, a smiley face, a praise clap for that? Amen. Amen. Then uh, this time when Jesus then uh, says, uh, peace be with you, he then, then goes and gives them uh, two gifts and, and, uh, and then in a commissioning. He, in the commissioning, he says, you know, I, I am sending you. He says he's going to be sending them, and he's, but he's not going to send them without some gifts. And so what are these gifts? Um, and I use the word what carefully. Um, the first gift is, is who, actually, and that is the, the, the Holy Spirit. Um, Jesus, see, Jesus promised to never leave the disciples alone. He promised them. He said, I'm, not, I'm never going to leave you alone. And, um, and so Jesus um, breathes the, the Holy Spirit upon them. Why? Because there's going to be 10 days that are going to trans, transpire between Jesus' bodily ascension into heaven and Pentecost when the Holy Spirit descends upon the church in a very powerful way. And so in the intervening 10, 10 days, Jesus has already breathed the Holy Spirit upon them. And so, and so that way, even though he bodily ascends, they're not going to be left alone. The Holy Spirit will be there with them. And of course, Jesus said, wherever two or three of you are gathered in my name, there I am in your midst. Um, and so, you know, here Jesus is comforting the disciples. And this is, we're reminded, you know, that is one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit. He is the comforter. And so the disciples are experiencing the comfort right then and there as they're going through this transition uh, in, in ministry. They're comforted then. And then at Pentecost, uh, 50 days after the resurrection, then uh, they're going to be fully commissioned by the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of times we talk about Matthew 28 as the commissioning of the, the, the disciples. That is true. They are told what they're going to do, but then the full the commissioning service, if you will, then is, is Pentecost when the Holy Spirit descends upon them. And then later, 
Okay, and then also, then another thing that Jesus gives is he gives the disciples the ability and the expectation that they will forgive each other's sins. And so why does Jesus do this? And, and, and then see how this ties in with Jesus giving peace to the disciples and peace to us. Because Jesus knows that they will sin, and Jesus knows that we will sin. And so he provides in, in advance this uh, ability and expectation that they will forgive one another. And, you know, in, in a marriage, for example, I mean, you can have the most beautiful, uh, godly wife in the world um, who puts up with so much from you. Uh, but be that as it may, you're going to have times where it's not always going to be, you know, perfect. And you're going to have to confess. She's going to have to forgive, or vice versa, once in a while. And, um, and when that happens, you know, that peace that then you have within your marriage, that you have within your family, with your children, with, with whomever, that peace that you have is such a blessing. Jesus wants us, God wants us to have his peace in this world. And then the third time in the text uh, that we see Jesus saying, peace be with you, is when Thomas is present, right? They're inside uh, the home there. The doors are locked. Jesus appears. You know, it's not really, it's not explained. It's just he's he's God in human form. And so he doesn't give up, you know, either characteristic. And, and so his body is able to go uh, through the door into the house. And it's also just a good reminder for us of in the Lord's Supper, you know, sometimes people say, well, how can Jesus' body be uh, all these places at the same time? Well, because he's true God and true man, and neither nature uh, is changed by that union. And so because he's true God, he can be omnipresent. He is omnipresent. And then in that way, we can receive his true body and his true blood. And it's demonstrated, the truth of what Jesus says in the Lord's Supper is demonstrated right there in that miracle, in that miraculous event there where he comes uh, and is standing there in the midst of them and the doors were locked, you know. Um, so he doesn't come down the chimney like old Saint Nick. I mean, it's Jesus. He's true God and true man. And, and he's right there, right? And so then, um, so what does Jesus do when he's there? He, I mean, just kind of picture this. Jesus then invites Thomas to wound him again. It's been eight days. I mean, so his human nature, the body has started to heal. I mean, there's 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 a, there's scabs. There's uh, the body starting to grow back together. You know, I'm sure it just hurt like the blazes. You know, and um, and Jesus says, "Stick your hand in. Go ahead, just jam it in there." You know. Uh, Jesus invites Thomas to wound him again. And, and, and I got to say, I think Jesus' feelings may have been hurt already by Thomas. And I don't think we always think about that, you know, that, that Jesus has feelings and that what we do and say, you know, sometimes we hurt his feelings with, with our behavior. Um, you know, most theologians don't think that Thomas took Jesus up on his offer. And why is that? Because the next thing we hear out of Thomas is my Lord and my God, Right. And man, that just had to make Jesus' heart just glow, right? Thomas says, my Lord and my God. It's, it's a confession of faith. And so what do we make of John chapter 20 here? Uh, Jesus sharing uh, his peace with us. I think a couple of important things. I think, first of all, Jesus wants you to be blessed with the peace that surpasses all human understanding. He wants you to have that. He wants you to have it tonight. That's why scripture says, cast your anxieties upon God because he cares for you. Don't go to bed tonight with a troubled heart and a troubled mind. Cast those anxieties upon God and receive the peace that Jesus offers to you. Jesus says it over and over and over again. And, um, and you know, I think also from the text, we see that Jesus will not be separated from you even if you hide in your room from the world, Jesus is not going to be separated from you. Jesus will not stop reaching out to you, even if you have said uh, hurtful things about him. He's going to keep reaching out to you, just like we see in the reading that we looked at tonight. So lastly, I just want to ask you to think about, you know, who do you know that's facing uncertainty? I, I have a good pastor friend of mine who just reached out to a group of us and he got a very bad medical report, a very bad medical report. And, you know, um, you don't need to know his name, uh, but I, I would ask you to just lift him up in prayer. The Holy Spirit knows who you're thinking of and uh, lift him up in your prayer. 
Uh, pray for healing. I want to encourage you to pray for healing for him. Pray for his faith to be kept strong. Uh, pray for those who attend to him to use their God-given gifts and abilities to the fullest extent possible. And pray that God will be glorified through this. And of course, pray all this according to the will of our Father in heaven in the name of Jesus. So I want you to think, I've shared with you, you know, somebody I know who's facing uncertainty. Um, I'm going to be with the troops. Uh, this is the first weekend of the month, and so I'll be down there Friday and Saturday. In fact, I'm going to be going down uh, tomorrow. I'm going down a day early because we have a, a group of our service members who are going to be out and about um, on mission, heading out on mission. And so um, I'm going to be there to be part of, of that process to help them. So I want to encourage you to keep our service members in your prayers and their loved ones uh, at all times. Um, so as you think about who do you know that's facing uncertainty, um, I want to encourage you to share John chapter 20, the reading tonight, John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31 with them. Share some of these thoughts. Point them to this video if you want to, whatever, however you want to do it. But help them to to know and to learn about the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that Jesus offers freely and fully every day. Amen? Amen. Guys, let's go in peace. Let's serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.